Each and every one, I pray that the blessings of the Lord are upon you today and that you're enjoying this wonderful and beautiful weather. Uh, I'm certainly always glad to see the sun break through the clouds and, and see the beautiful day that God has afforded us. I do want to thank each and every one of you for your faithfulness and your support to the work of God. I would like to share with you a verse of scripture this morning as we do our Tuesday morning devotion each week at this time. And I'm going to read to you from Luke chapter 11, verse 42, where the writer to hear Jesus is speaking to the Pharisees. And he said, But woe unto you, Pharisees, for ye tithe and ye mint and rue and all manner of herbs. But he said, You pass over judgment and the love of God. These ought you to have done, and to not leave the other undone. Jesus here is addressing the Pharisee, which was a popular religious sect at that time. And he points out the fact that they're failing to follow through on what real Christianity is all about. They like to do those things where they are recognized. They like for people to see them in their clerical robes and their long prayers, and also their giving of sacrifices. But the Lord was speaking to them about something that was not only equally but more important. And that was that they would have a sense of Christianity with regards to how that they would minister to others. He said, you've given and tithed, he said, over every small thing. But he said, I would like to encourage you to realize those things you should do. But he said, there's some things that you've left undone. And he said, those are the things that have to do with judgment and mercy. I, I think it's fair to say that our lives will probably be measured not for the things that we have done, but sometimes for the things that we have left undone. And so today, I think it's important that we're faithful in doing the things that uh, God expects of us. But a lot of times, people focus more on the things that are seen by the eyes of men rather than just the eyes of God. In Micah chapter 6 and verse 8, there was some discussion about what it would take to satisfy God. Would it be sacrifices? Would it be the gifts of oil and precious things? In Micah chapter 6 and verse 8, the Lord replied to him and said, God hath showed you, O man, what is good. And what doth the Lord require of thee but to do justly and to love mercy? and to walk humbly uh, with thy God. While God expects us to fulfill our obligations to him, his focus is also on our spirit and the motive behind all that we do. To fail in developing our sense of compassion and fairness for others is to fail in the ultimate goal of what it is to really actually be a Christian. I think of the words of the Lord when he spoke in Luke chapter 20 and verse 46. He said, Beware of the scribes, he said, which desire to walk in long robes, and they love public greetings in the markets, and they like the highest seats in the synagogues and the chief rooms at feast. But he said, They devour widow house, widows' houses, and for a show make long prayers. He said, the same shall receive a greater damnation. Here Jesus is depicting this sect of religion that for the purpose of personal praise, they make long prayers and wear clerical garments that depict them as being some super religious person. He states that they receive special recognition in public places and some of the best seats at special gatherings. Jesus said, beware of these things. Beware of these kind of actions. Note, it is not about others, but when we do these things, it's more about ourselves and bringing attention to ourselves. This is no different than those who try to identify with the personalities and the fads and the fashions of the world to bring attention to themselves. Seeking to draw attention to ourselves when it appears to be of a greater importance than the importance of the lives and the souls of other men is a failure on the part of anyone who tries to call themselves a Christian. Jesus said in Matthew 23 and 11, But he that is the greatest among you shall be your servant. 
Jesus spoke the same words in the message of our text that is recorded in Matthew. And when I was reading these things, I wanted to somehow focus on the fact that the part that we tend to sometimes leave undone is to remember that we are servants to the cause of Christ. We're not VIPs. We're not those very important people. We're Christians. We are called to serve. Our job is to accommodate all of those who are seeking to know Jesus Christ and to enable them in making that possible. This is the part that we cannot afford to leave undone. I thank God for the wonderful opportunity of worship and the opportunity of being in the house of God and then taking that same experience into the public places and being able to share it with men and women that we encounter on a day-to-day -day basis. However, we're not there for them to appreciate our sense of self-righteousness. But what we are there to do is to somehow communicate to them that we have something they desperately need, and that is to come in contact with the compassion and the empathy of Jesus Christ, who is concerned about their eternal soul. I pray today that God's hand of blessing will be upon you. And as you go about your daily life, I pray that in your encounter with others that may not know Jesus Christ, that after talking with you, they can experience the love, the compassion, and the empathy of God more so than to walk away and say, you know what, that was a very religious person that I talked to. If that's all they can remember, then we're failing in our duty and our calling. I pray today that some will be impacted by my life. I pray that somehow the few short words that we've shared with you will help us all to remember that we're called to be servants and to serve the purpose of God in reaching a lost and a dying world. God bless you. I pray that his hand of blessing be upon you and keep you. Go with God today, and I can assure you he will go with you. Amen. Please like, comment, and subscribe.